Morning, everyone. My name is Tony Jasinski, and I'm a county legislator representing District 4, Araudium, Dwaynesburg, Princetown, and Delanson. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge uh, a couple of folks with us this morning. Our chair of the county legislature, Gary Hughes, is behind me. Gary. We're joined by Chris and Lauren Davis, the new owners of um, this wonderful facility. Ray Gillen, chair of the Met Schenectady Metroplex Development Authority. And I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize my esteemed colleague, Legislator Holly Volano, whose collaboration on this project proved crucial to its success. Regrettably, she couldn't be with us this morning because she had a prior commitment. Today marks a significant moment for our community as we gather to celebrate the grand opening of the Forever Bods Fitness Club at the former Duanesburg Y. When the Capital District Y announced the permanent closure of this facility in 2022, we knew that this amazing community asset would soon be at risk of deteriorating and slowly turning into an eyesore. And we knew that something had to be done. Since that time, we've been steadfast in our commitment to restoring this invaluable asset. And it truly took a village to breathe, to breathe life back into a, this cherished community space, formerly known as the Duanesburg Y. And uh, in all my time on the county legislature uh, and public office, this probably represents one of the most complicated challenging uh, projects that we've ever been able to bring home. Uh, and we've got a lot of folks to thank because of that. We've been steadfast in this commitment, and truly it took a village to, bring, to breathe life back into this cherished community space. Our partnership with Chris and Lauren Davis, along with the efforts of Metroplex Chair Ray Gillen and our County Attorney's Office, especially County Attorney Chris Gardner, exemplify the power of collaboration and with the additional support provided by Tom Putnam, we have shown once again that working together works. As we embark on this new chapter, let us remember that this facility is more than just a fitness center. It's a symbol of community resilience and unity, providing access to Duanesburg schools, our kids, seniors, other public programs. We're not only improving the quality of life for our residents, but we're also ensuring a brighter future for generations to come. Today's ribbon cutting represents the culmination of these collective efforts serves as a testament to what we can accomplish when we come together as a community. And I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed to this endeavor and hope that we can continue to work hand in hand to create a better tomorrow for all of us. I'd like to ask now our Chair of the County Legislature, Gary Hughes, to come up and say a few words. Okay? There's very little that I can add to uh, what Tony has already said. Uh, I will simply say that today is a special moment. It's good to be here to celebrate the transformation of the former Duanesburg YMCA into a vibrant and thriving fitness center and community hub. It could have gone sideways in so many ways, but it did not. During the pandemic, we received American Rescue Plan funds, and those were transformative, and this is a great example of, I believe, the proper use of those ARPA funds. We had here a, a viable YMCA, 2,000 members shuttered during the pandemic and uh, in risk of deteriorating. And we were able to uh, cause that to move forward and transform into, into something that we see here today under the leadership of the, the Davis family. I remember the first time I met them, we had a at a meeting up the road here a little bit, and you could see the wheels turning in Chris's head a little bit. We were, we were talking about something a little bit different with the school district at that point, but you could see, mm, I could see how this could work. So this is just a, uh, just a great example of, of how the community can work together, individuals, the government. You know, we always say, well, we're, we're the government, we're here to help, uh, and we are here to help. It may take us a little while, but we are here to help, and 99% and, uh, of the time we get it right. So uh, I'd just like to say we've made substantial strides in our future. Um, I, I do want to recognize Legislator Jasensky, and I also recognize uh, Legislator Volano, uh, who steadfastly kept pushing us along on this, and our County Attorney Chris Gardner and Deputy County Attorney Frank Salamone, Ray Gillen. Um, when, when, when those three get it in their head, they're going to get something done. It, 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 it happens. 
So all working together, we've made substantial strides. Working together still works, and we're here to prove it again. Thank you so much this morning. Mr. Davis, would you like to come on up, Lauren, Chris? Good morning. Welcome to the club. My name is Lauren Davis. This is my husband, Chris Davis. Um, it is with immense joy and pride that we stand before you today to inaugurate the grand opening, or grand opening weekend, of Forever Bods Fitness Club. This moment marks the culmination of months of hard work, dedication, and unwavering passion for health, wellness, and community. Over two years ago, we toured this facility for the first time since its closure. And what began as a joke and then a pipe dream has now come to fruition. This ceremony today symbolizes more than just the reopening of a building. It's the commencement of a journey towards a better version of ourselves, a better future for our kids. It's about making a commitment to prioritize our physical as well as mental health, push our limits, and strive for excellence in every aspect of our lives. We extend our deepest gratitude to all of those who have contributed to making this dream a reality. First to Tom and Dusty Putnam who couldn't be here today, but it was exactly one year ago today that we met the Putnams for the first time. We shared our vision for this club and they went above and beyond our expectations to support that vision. Their generosity towards this project, project is extraordinary and we want to make sure that we thank them here publicly. To Joshua and Sue Loden, who introduced us to this facility's special interest group, hosted many meetings for us at the Apple Barrel. Group members including Wendy Nelson, Dennis Packard, Walt Silva, Kurt Pelton, Mike Walpole, Annabelle Felton, who never lost faith in finding a way to bring this building back to life. We thank you. A special thanks to the building's original owner and founder of the Duanesburg Area Community Center, Ken Romanski. His support and guidance through this process has been extremely helpful. Thank you, group. <laughs> to Anthony Jasinski, Holly Villano, Shane Bargy, Chris Gardner, Rory Fluman, and the entire Schenectady County Legislature for taking a chance on us, even after this big guy from Texas usurped the mic at a board meeting early in 2023 and introduced our intentions in a not so subtle way. <laughs> we would not be here without your support. To Ray Gillen and David Hogekamp and everybody from the Schenectady County Metroplex Development Authority, Ray, to say this project wouldn't be possible without your support is the understatement of the year. The transformative work you do for this county is inspiring. I'm almost done. Uh, to Bill Nordenhold and Lauren Barton from NBT, our attorney Michael Schultes, insurance broker Rob Smith, all of our friends and family for their support and never-ending encouragement. To our team, Mike Finley and Riley Proctor, we shared our vision for this facility with you guys long before we had support or funding. Thank you for your patience and believing in this mission. Thank you for long hours of spackling, painting, cleaning, organizing, reorganizing, brainstorming, planning. Our members are very lucky to have you. And finally, to our members, our Forever Bods members, both here and in Middleburg, as we embark on this exciting journey together, let us embrace the challenges ahead with courage, determination, and a relentless pursuit of growth. Let us inspire one another to lift up each other and celebrate every milestone, big and small. Thank you. I don't have much to add to that, but uh, you guys don't know us really a lot, but we took over Middleburg three years ago that place is unrecognizable today, and that's what we hope to do the same here. We have lots of plans. What you see today is not what you're gonna see in a year. In two years, it's gonna be completely a new facility. So uh, it's been said that the community might be too small to have a facility of this size. I don't believe it. I think the members here don't believe it. We just need everybody to come out and support, and we promise we will uh, make it worth it for everybody. And. Uh, I also want to thank Mike and, and Riley. It was two years ago that we first told them about this, got them excited about it, and then it happened, fell apart, happened, fell apart, happened, fell apart. It was an emotional journey for everybody, and they stuck with us. And like Lauren said, we're lucky to have them. But thank you. Uh, 
Uh, join me in welcoming Ray Gillen, Chair of Metro Metroplex Development Authority, to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a rare day when my name is associated with fitness and, and good, uh, good health habits. So I was questioning this name early on. I didn't really get the forever bods, but I get it now. It's about like a whole lifestyle and, and having a commitment to a healthy lifestyle. And that was Davis's vision and it's come true. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a lot of people to thank. Th this building was closed. The Y walked away. Boo. You know. And th these folks behind me would not stop. Tony, Holly from the county ledge, Frank, Chris, the whole leadership of the county said, this is a beautiful building. It was built in 2009 by BBL. It looks great. And it's just going to sit there empty. People like Dennis kept calling us from, uh, from out here. And, and there were different ideas, the school district, the college, our community college, which is great. Uh, but in the end, we, we, we hooked up with the Davises, and it was the best thing that ever happened. But it was a very tough project to put together, one of the most challenging uh, projects that uh, we've encountered at Metroplex in our 20-year existence. So we're really grateful, and we have to thank folks. First, our board member from um, uh, Dwaynesburg and Princeton, Todd Edwards is here. Thank you, Todd, for supporting this. Our terrific uh, Metroplex staff, David, Steve, Scott, uh, Danielle, Tonya, and Jennifer are all here. Thank you. Take a bow. Thank you for all your help. Bob Putnam and his family, you know, we had a funding gap, and the bank was very rigorous, and we thank NBT Bank, but the bank was very rigorous on the financials, and Tom Putnam wrote a $300,000 check and helped us close the gap. And I really wish he could be here today, but he's in Hawaii having a good time. So he's in a good place. So we're happy that nicer here, nicer here today, but uh, thank you. Uh, Frank Salamone and Chris Gardner from the County Attorney's Office. This was a very complicated closing, a very complicated deal to put together. And their support, like, it, like Tony's and Holly's, was just unwavering. You know, we had the puzzle. How do we reopen this empty building? And Tony, Holly, Chris, Frank, Gary, just never wavered. I did admit, I wavered. <laughs> I wavered sometimes. But they were just unrelenting in their support for getting this great building open uh, again. And we're really thankful for their efforts today. So we appreciate the whole team. It takes a big team to get a building like this back on its feet. And we're very, very excited. And the improvements that have been done are just amazing. So congratulations, everybody. Thank you for having us. So how about we cut the ribbon? Yeah. <laughs> the light. Into the sunshine. Into the light. Say one, two, three. Oh, one, two, scissors. Scissors. Countdown. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs>